Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on when and where you listen to this call from. Nicholas Conti here again, back at you guys with another weekly preview. Today we have four great trade setups lined up, and we're also going to dive into some of the sentiment indications we use that allows us to hold these trades and actually progress in our trend following strategy. So without further ado, we're going to jump into some charts. And we do have Euro USD pulled up. We've been itemizing a couple of things with EU. We're currently actually in this trade, looking for another entry. Uh, so just kind of walking down some of the price action. We actually kind of topped out up here around the 123 area, dropped down, got a pullback to around 122, which was a key level for us. We actually uh, facilitated some trade there. We did get in around the 123 level as well. We've been holding both of these trades. So we uh, dropped, came back, retest, and we continued the downside action. Uh, last week we did end with a nice green candle. So we are looking for this double trend line area to actually hold and give us some type of a uh, resistance. So we can see, we itemize um, price action. We can see how price bounced off of the zone before it bounced again. We finally got a break, which actually shows us, you know, it was an important key level for us. So we're looking for price to come up and potentially come up and test this. Any rallies to the upside will be selling opportunities for us. And we're going to be looking to facilitate or play this trade to the downside. Now, one main thing that I do see most retail or newer traders, um, they actually shy away from sentiment. Now, looking at these sentiment indications, you don't have to be an economist or having a degree in economy. Uh, we have there's a lot of top tier economists that uh, run these reports or pull this data and we actually pull from it, which allows us to kind of see the forest over the trees. So a couple of things we have going with euro you guys. Give me a second. I'm going to pull up my actual spreadsheet. And uh actually going to be introducing this this week this is going to be our weekly sentiment uh, pdf for spreadsheet we'll send this out to our members um whether in epic or our personal members or private members and they'll be able to kind of read through this and get some tips on actual sentiment so uh one of our favorite sentiment indicators is the clt report or actually let me do this if, if you guys aren't familiar with sentiment we are diving or we do have a new video coming out for our members. It's gonna come through and break down how to find sentiment in the market. Uh, most top tier traders or professional traders use sentiment to come to the conclusion on market direction or the actual um, things behind the chart, which was actually moving price action. So it does give you an edge or an advantage to typical retail traders when you're using sentiment. So couple of different things we like to use. These are a couple of different uh, sentiment indicators that we, we do use in our trading. Uh, things like the commitment of trader, the VIX, and we do also use some different contrarian methods that you will see inside of this um, weekly spreadsheet. So this will be released to members beginning of each week. And as you guys learn some of our strategy, our techniques of how we're moving through the foreign exchange or really any, any market, uh, you'll be able to kind of put this together and, and follow the clues or follow the yellow brick, brick road towards um, optimal pairing and some nice trade setups. So when we're able to catch these 300, 500 pips, um, technically you wouldn't be able to hold those unless you have some big data behind it, giving you a reason to, you know, actually trend follow. So this is great helping, you know, traders learn how to hold the trades. Um, the thing in the market is you have to allow your trades to work, give your trades room to, to run so your winners can pay for your losers. So what we have here is we kind of start off with the CLT. We can see, all right, let's take a look back. So one main thing we have is uh, most people, most traders, as we can see here in our CLT data, most traders are actually retail traders are going to be bullish the euro. 
So we want to position ourselves more like a bank or a hedge fund, and we want to do the opposite of what most traders do. We all know that about 80 to 90% of retail traders lose money within their first 90 days. So we want to do the opposite and kind of align ourselves with the, with the smart money. So with COT here, we see that most speculators are heavily long in the euro. They're also most speculators, which also includes some small funds, some smaller hedge funds. They're going to be going heavily short the dollar. Now, that expectation is built out on that the euro is going to be doing better going forward than the dollar. So a couple of things we see as far as the data that doesn't um, doesn't line up as factual. Uh, we see the eurozone is heavily impacted by the shutdowns and the virus. Um, all around, the dollar is making a better recovery currently. And we can kind of see it starting to take form in price action. So I will, I will save you guys the, the bore of some of the other data that we're looking at. Um, it actually becomes more exciting the more you learn about you know macro fundamentals and uh, some of the things that actually drives price action. But as far as uh, Euro USD, we're going to be looking forward to potentially pull up. Look, taking these as short opportunities, we're going to be holding our position, kind of moving some of the stops down. Uh, now, if it doesn't doesn't pull pull up or do a pullback, beginning of this week, market open, we'll be looking to enter right up under one ninety fifty, so underneath this double bottom, and our target is going to be one eighteen and one sixteen for Euro USD. Next trade we'll look at is Euro JPY. So we did get an entry here, around 126.90-ish. 127 area is a strong level for us. So we do currently have a stop about 127.50. Now, if this does open and it pushes a, a little higher, we actually may go ahead and close this out. Don't let it hit stop. And we're looking to facilitate trade underneath this actual uh, trend, trend line. So, pardon me, so Euro, um, going forward, we also like to look at things as bond, as uh, yields, bond yields. So we're looking for the euro uh, yield to be lower than the JPY or to, to actually perform worse than the JPY going forward. Um, great information, guys, can start if you don't look at uh, yields, does give you or dictate price action or where the strengths or the weaknesses of certain currencies. So it'd be a great thing to implement into your trading. Again, a shameless plug. We're definitely diving over, you know, these topics in our member center. So you guys are more than welcome to, you know, contact me and we'll we'll get you kind of situated in the right uh, direction. So fortunately that wasn't my bond yield one, but we're working on a lot of data, pushing out a lot of content to you guys. Um, Speaking about kind of backtracking to the dollar, uh, we have the one of the biggest short positions uh, in history. It's kind of going back and uh, rivaling the 2008 crash. So history doesn't always repeat, repeat itself, but it does rhyme. So more information on, you know, the euro uh, does consist or it is trade weighted with the dollar. So people bullish the euro, bearish the dollar, we're looking for a flip on that and potentially stops being ran. So EJ, prime spot 125, break this psychological level of 126. We'll be looking to facilitate trade to the downside. Next trade we do have up is Euro GBP. So we got a nice trade in Euro GBP. We've been in this trade since around a 90-ish handle. Looking at price action, we have some real choppy price action big spikes so i'm kind of a fan of more of a swing trading approach uh avoid some of these huge spikes and um you know random or sporadic movements in the market and we got going got our move down nice push down we've been moving down 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 got another nice move to kind of shift and break a zone uh, we're looking at price to come back up you know the euro is kind of oversold at this time so we'll look forward to come back up and test this uh, previous zone here around the 88 level, we're looking at it as, as shorting opportunities. First target, 
87 longer term, we do see ourselves coming all the way down to 83. We come out, we zoom out a little bit. We see these nice little zones here where price peaked. Support equals resistance. Give us a nice, pardon me, that's a nice zone for 87. But going forward, we do see GBP, especially after the Brexit um, decision to continue to strengthen uh, in a better place than the Eurozone currently. But this is the, the zone I was looking at. We see kind of like a little double bottom of retest. So 83's key key level for us. We're gonna be looking to longer term, get back down to this area. Next trade we'll look at is gonna be a peroxy. It's gonna be a Euro SIC. So anytime the Euro is going down, we'll see the SIC, you know, move in a similar uh, behavior, a manner. So as far as price action, we had, you know, nice push up, pull back, retest. We actually came right down to this, this actual EMA. Formed the trend area. Now we're coming back and we're right back down at that EMA. So we'll look for this to potentially bounce here. And longer term, you know, macro goes on our side. Economics, we're looking for a push all the way up to the 90 level. So it'll be a good trade opportunity for us. Uh, last thing I did want to come through is just show you guys some of the tools we're using to come to these conclusions that I always tell my traders, you have to learn how to look outside of the charts to, you know, keep yourself from being so quick fire in and out, in and out. You want to, you know, allow your trades room to work and, and grab a hold of some of these nice trends. So to do that, we do rely on sentiment. I uh, just wanted to kind of showcase some of the things we're going to be highlighting a nice, neat package for our members. It'll be, uh, you know, you'll get a lot of sentiment data and a few fundamentals that we're actually looking at. Uh, we also look at client positioning. So example here, one, one, one nice trade we're also itemizing. We didn't look at the chart. Uh, we're looking at is Audi USD. Uh, the, these things kind of give you guys the trade. So price action, these are leading indicators to price action. You know, you hear a lot of rhetoric about, you know, the secret sauce inside the charts and look at this institution and this and that. Well, this is really what professional or hedge fund traders are using to come to a conclusion. So uh, we like to kind of judge or pull up sentiment. And let me see if I can find, wish I could find my walkthrough. So you want to dive a little deeper and kind of understand what's happening in the foreign exchange market um, and how these have these different currencies, pairs, and also assets have relationships. Uh, makes your job a lot easier and, and avoids, you know, fake outs, uh, false moves, failed patterns uh, that, you know, most typical traders run into. Uh, so you have a more of a overview or look over the forest, over the trees. So out of USD, uh, we can see here that most retail shirts, traders are going net long. Um, biggest biggest information you want to take here is that we're typically using the contrarian method. We all know that you know once so many traders go one way, the banks come in and sweep from under them, sweep the rug from under them. So uh, it's called a contrarian view to the actual crowd sentiment. The fact that traders are net long suggests that out of USD prices may continue to fall. Now, not only that. So we have this piece of sentiment indicator. We are in indication. We also look at things like the COT report. And then we want to look at different relationships that we'll find in the market. Uh, there's certain things that we talk about, like risk on, risk off. Uh, we won't go into too much detail, but you guys are free to reach out. And we'll definitely, you know, we have a couple of walkthroughs on what is risk on, what is risk off, market sentiment, wash on, wash off, how to actually, you know, get a more defined view of what's going on, allowing you guys to have build more trust in your trades and actually, you know, produce what we're all looking for at the end of the day, more profit. So uh, we like to combine, when we look at Adi, we like to look at the iron ore prices. We did see, you know, a dip in iron ore. Actually, if we looked at the chart, we'll see a dip in Adi uh, USD. Now, uh, iron ore had a massive run up using uh, China was buying a lot of uh, iron ore. All these different economies have, you know, trade going. So 
it's kind of where we get the relationships from uh, import exports. Uh, it's not as difficult as most, you know, feel or, or take it to be. Uh, we're, you know, there's a set kind of guidelines in the relationship you see, and we use those to make, you know, higher level or more um, higher probability with higher risk to reward trades. So we see this drop down, it's going to weigh in on the Audi. Uh, last quick thing we're, we're going to be having covered here is we also look at things like yields and bonds. So we'll give you guys a more in-depth look into the market. A big thing that's going to help our dollar uh, play is that we have uh, inflation expectations at a record high. We also have the yield curve. Um, we also have the yield curl, curled, can't even talk. So we actually have the uh, yield curl steepening. And uh, a couple of little, little techniques that you know we dive in. A lot of our, our people um, expect and look forward to a uh, big thing we're seeing here is the uh, the uh, ISM paid prices starting to kind of it's a leading a great leading indicator for CPI. So uh, you know if it continues another uh, bullish, if it continues moving strongly up, um, it's another bullish fundamental for bonds. Uh, another COT positioning showing you know everybody's feels like the dollar's going to zero. Um, this would have been helpful earlier with our Euro USD chart. So this is the CIT, the city pain index. Uh, we've noticed that every time we get these levels in this index, get a nice rally, nice drop, nice drop, excuse me, nice drop. So here we, about an 800 pip drop, a pip drop. We see here with the same level, not sure exactly how many pips, but we should have a nice run to the downside. So uh, I know a lot of my members have been looking forward to this uh, alongside of the the course on sentiment. We're also going to be throwing this out every week. You can find this in our in our actual member section. It'll be a nice little PDF. Walk you guys through what we're looking at, our weekly preview, as well as some of the sentiment indications is helping us come to a conclusion on those trades. Uh, short and sweet, few, few different trades we're looking at. We're heavily looking into the euro. So I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, concerns, feel free to message me at nick at kingvisionsfx.com or you can simply reach out on all forms of social media. Um, looking forward to this trading week. Once again, everybody trade safe and we'll see you guys um, at World Farm Midweek Preview.